Thank you, Adrian. My name is Robert, I, and I lead the smart contract development team with the virtual machine as well. There is so much happening at the consensus at protocol level, constant innovation and building. The execution layer must, of course, keep up with all of this. Evolving the world's economy through decentralization, we require a smart contract platform to execute complex operations with low latency and to able to continue doing so throughout imminent periods of exponential growth. This was the design goal of the Aaron's architecture, to create a dependable execution environment whose speed and cost remain constant under heavy load, which is able to scale with, new, with demand and integrate new components with ease. The, at the heart of the execution layer sits the Aaron virtual machine. It is based on WebAssembly, an open source portable binary code format that matches CPU architectures. The VM uses a heavily modified and optimized Wasmer engine and a single pass compiler. We have also added a set of protections to keep execution safe at all times. It is executed in a sandbox environment using different threats to the main protocol process, protects against panics, just-in-time compiling bombs, memory corruption, and more. Guess usage is directly compiled into the actual contract, every operation having a clearly defined value. We have also optimized how imports and APIs are handled. Execution is stateless. Intermediate re re uh, results are written to a local cache, only final updates being written to the blockchain, and only after successful execution. Even memory management bro was brought out of WASM directly to Go. Thanks to our design choices and implementation, the Aaron VM is measurably one of, perhaps, the fastest virtual machine in the space. But that does not mean we have to stop looking for potential to do better. Quite the opposite. One of the improvements since, uh, since the mainnet we have done is the ahead of time compilation, a mechanism that keeps the co compiled contracts as serialized objects. This drastically reduces the time used by smart contract execution, as 95% of the time was wasted on contract compilation. This made an average improvement of 10x. And we are already testing the next major improvement here, the warm instances, which keeps a clean version of compiled contracts as executable objects. No more time wasted on deserialization. This alone will bring another 5x improvement in the execution times. Soon we will move towards WASMR 2.2, which brings a series of improvements with a single post compiler, therefore making execution even better. Right now, we have more than 3,600 swaps per second, pure VM performance with the ESDT using the next generation Meyer Exchange contracts. You might, someone, you, may, you will see composable mentioned here, and you will immediately think about the composability in a sharded architecture challenge, which we did solve, by the way. In this context, however, we want to illustrate the importance of design decisions to build the Aaron network out of modular components that are easy to integrate and reuse. Our decision to use WASM for VM is a great example. WebAssembly is fast, efficient, standardized, and easy for any developer to work with. And very importantly, every new module library designed for WASM can be picked up and integrated as is. A great example of benefits of our composable architectures are our continuously improving cryptographic APIs. They use outdated libraries for BLS, Schnorr, Edwards, or all the ellipticers mathematics, which can be executed in the native speed, as fast and efficient as possible, open to be used by any smart contract developer. Other blockchains use dedicated smart contracts to address this issue, meaning the results are slower and much more expensive. We are already working on integrating the newest libraries regarding threshold signatures as zero knowledge proofs as well. So composability in a sharded architecture deals with the challenges for DEPs to retain the ability to work together even when deployed across multiple shards. Aaron addresses the composability issue problem via asynchronous calls and the ESDT token standard. 
smart contracts call an one another via the async call API, and the protocol resolves calling back the initial smart contract on the defined callback function with the accumulated results and token transfers. All this is, is possible because of a well-defined process run by every single node through which we create unsigned transactions. Now we take the next step, and after almost two years of work, we are close to release the Asynchronous Calls version 2.0, which includes the concepts of time locks and promises. In V1, only one async call was allowed, and we could not resolve multiple changed asyncs. However, in V2, all this is possible. The developer can call multiple contracts, define multiple callbacks, and even have a closure when all of this is finished. All of this is implemented in the VM and the protocol level, so the developer do not have to worry about anything. Callbacks are always called, promises are always kept, and time locks will always be met. Accounts, accounts on other blockchains only have an address, a balance, and a nonce to keep track of his transactions. We saw an opportunity early on to augment accounts with additional pieces of information which are essential and to enriching the identity and opening up a new host of use cases. This is why we introduced the smart accounts. They are accounts with added key value storage and a set of built-in functions which enable certain information to be written directly to the account. Hero tags are an example of such information, immediately adding another dimension to what was previously just a string of gibberish. You can think about any kinds of information, like your public email address you want to share, or a cryptographic hash to verify the ownership of data, data the document attesting ownership of something, medical records, citizenships, and so on. The next is the Aarond ESDT token standard, which is completely different from other chains. It is implemented directly into the protocol. One important implication is that token issued on the network does not need its own smart contract, which greatly reduces its storage footprint and cost and resolves the DeFi composability problem. Perhaps even more importantly, every token, fungible, semi-fungible, non-fungible, is working on the audited built-in functions running at the protocol level. All tokens being first-class citizens, they are embedded directly into the protocol. This means that issuing a token does not require security audit of the token, nor does it require expensive developer resources to create or maintain. With this massive rem barrier removed, anyone can create their own coin or NFT collection and start experimenting with Web3. Integration is done in all levels. Explorer, Wallet, Meyer, Light Clients, you name it. ESDTs are for Web3, what launching your own website or launching your own app were in the early internet years. A catalyst for innovation and opportunity. Coming back to a bit more technical things, I want to highlight an important implication of having tokens built into the protocol level. Token transfer transactions do not require the VM to, uh, to be processed. Instead, tokens transfers are done via regular transaction. You only add the token ID and the amount to be transferred into the data field. This increases the transfer speed, reduces the gas requirements. As no smart contract is involved, involved transferring the tokens, the Aaron network can process up to 15,000 tokens transfers per second. Computing everything involved gas, consensus, peer-to-peer -peer block propagation. The implication for payments as similar transactions are hard to overstate. The combination of a protocol embedded token standard and smart accounts give birth to unique opportunities. On Aaron, tokens that an account owns are etched into the account itself, marking a fundamental difference of ownership on Web3. Smart accounts actually own the tokens, whereas simple accounts on other chains have their tokens assigned in third-party smart contracts. That's a bit like having your money in your pocket versus in a third-party deposit box. The legal, economical, and psychological implications of true ownership are critical for the upcoming Web3 transformation. When implemented in a high-throughput, low-latency, inexpensive blockchain, 
it will be a powerful catalyst for adoption, even in areas previously not thought possible to decentralize. Next, I want to highlight some subtle yet equally important options that arise of the ESDT standard and the way it interacts with smart contracts. By default, the error on smart contracts are non-payable, meaning simple token transfers will fail and this will save a lot of time and money. A smart contract can have its functions triggered by ESDT, token transfers, by additional information on the, on the data field. There are other great features of ESDTs, like built-in royalties for NFTs, handled by a simple API. Or local roles, another important innovation. For a given token ID, the token manager can define multiple local roles for multiple addresses. We use this, for example, in MyRDEX to give different smart contracts permissions to mint and burn locked max or max, depending on user interaction. You might example allow a multi-signature contract to update your own NFT collection. Last year, while developing the Meyer Exchange, we saw an urgent need to enable transfers of multiple tokens from a single transaction. On other blockchains, adding liquidity needs at least three transactions. By implementing the multi-transfer capability, we can do that with only one. As multi-transfer works with all kinds of combinations of tokens, it opens up an abundant potential of use cases in DeFi attestation. We have other goodies as well, like transfer role, where one can limit to which addresses a token can be transferred. So you could make a token that is only tradable on a set of specific exchanges, or an NFT that can only be traded in a set of specific marketplaces. If you want it, this has even deeper implications for automatically adhering to regulatory requirements, something that perhaps only DeFi products will be able to do. Anchoring the unlimited potential of the limitless metaverse possibilities of the multiverse itself into the fabric of reality can only be done by a decentralized network that is safe, secure, and above all, scalable. So I will leave you with these key facts about the Aeron network execution environment. Smart contracts, fast, small, composable, upgradable, and 30% royalties for developers. Smart accounts, Web3 ID building blocks, associated data tree, key value storage, built-in functions. Tokens, fast Web3 payments, true ownership, royalties for NFTs, boundless creativity. Thank you.